Amnesty International has said that as cases of coronavirus increase in sub-Saharan Africa, authorities in the region must take urgent action to protect inmates from COVID-19 by decongesting the prisons. The director for Western Central Africa of the group, Samira Daoud, said in a statement on Monday that this was important to avert a public health catastrophe in the region. Given the general lack of health care and sanitation, he urged authorities to release prisoners of conscience while reviewing cases of pre-trial detention and guaranteeing access to health care and sanitation products in all facilities. Joining us now is Osai Oju-Igo, Country Director, Amnesty International. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, uh, there are already efforts to decongest the prisons ahead of the call by Amnesty. Even President Buhari has directed that the CJN t make a move to decongest the prison um, in reaction to all the concerns that has been raised. But are we releasing enough inmates to really stand a chance against the virus in our prisons? Uh, thank you very much uh, for raising this very important issue. Um, I don't, we do not believe that the government at this point in time is, has released enough prisoners because they are still trying to manage the modalities for doing so. The intake of prisoners that were released were based on those who were due to be released um, in six months' time. So rather than waiting for that time, they proposed um, a six months, an early um, release. But we actually want it to be more active and deliberate purpose to ensure in the first instance that those who are not even supposed to be in prison in the first place, like prisoners of conscience or people who who have been on pretrial detention for a very long time and their cases have been moved on, to be immediately released. And also to seek um, steps to ensure that they can properly identify those who are very vulnerable. So the elderly, and then women who might already have dependent children or might be pregnant and in detention. Because as we know, those groups of people are already at high risk of um, contracting the disease as a result of their um, underlying conditions or because of the current situation of their state of health. All right, so it's uh actually an urgent need that needs to be addressed. All right, but, but let's look at the other side of the coin. There are those that are concerned that releasing these prisoners might be counterproductive. Um, is it wise to release people to an uncertain situation? Remember, they have to have some sort of um, relief. They have to have some sort of a cushion to rejoin the society. And um, we don't know who has the infection at the moment. It's gone to community transmission. So question remains. Could this be counterproductive, releasing inmates at this time of the pandemic? Wouldn't they be safer where they are? Uh, we need to note that um, what makes the prisons a high risk is because they are overcrowded and oftentimes they are in an unhygienic environment. So they are already at high risk. And we don't need to, to um, put them in further risk if we cannot create some of those the government has already said, uh, wash your hands. Do the prisons have enough facilities to ensure people can wash their hands regularly? We said people need to maintain a certain level of safe distance. The current conditions of the prison, do they allow that? If the answers to these questions are no, then it's important that this government should take steps to either ensure that they can do safe distance and ensure that there's to water and proper um, facilities in the prison, including health facilities that can test people's feet and appropriate. If that's not possible, then at the barest minimum is to ensure that everyone, it doesn't matter whether they are prisoners, they are IDP refugees, are given same access to health care and the necessary facilities they need to be protected from COVID. That's the barest minimum the government can do. All right, let, and let's... So this okay. It's one step. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish your thought. And so the prison decongestion is one step that the government can take 
to ameliorate the current situation. All right, let's look at one issue. There was one particular one that was cited um, by Amnesty, and that's the pretrial detention being excessively used as a tool uh, as, uh, of punishment across sub saharan Africa. Are there any solutions you can think of, considering our slow justice system? Well, I think that um, the new law, the new laws that have been put in place in terms of the trans transformation of the prison to a correctional center has already given us an insight into the sort of methods the justice system should be adopting in order to avoid this situation. One way is to find how the communities can help in actually ensure that persons who have committed of are able to conduct these members of society. And in any case, punishments are supposed to be correct. But what we are seeing now is that people put in detention indefinitely or for long periods of time, even for very simple two offenses, is detrimental not only to that person but to the larger society. And so the steps that we should be taking now is to be looking in terms of how we can ensure that the community is actually having the facilities it needs whether it's in terms of access to opportunities or access to resources, access to legal aid, in order to prevent this enormous prior crisis that we have right now, in not only in Nigeria, but in the entire, entire continent. All right, Josai, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you so much for having me. You take care.